This video is brought to you by PUBG Mobile. Download the game, get playing, and celebrate their second anniversary with them by clicking the link in the description. Today, we're gonna be drawing, we're gonna be animating, and most importantly, crank up the synth music because we are headed back to the 80s. See, I've been wanting to do some more motion posters after my collab with the box office artist, but I didn't know exactly what angle to take with them or what characters to use. Then, the awesome people over at PUBG Mobile presented me with the perfect opportunity. See, they've just launched some awesome new skins to celebrate the second anniversary of their game, and those skins are pretty awesome looking. I mean, take a look for yourself. So I saw those, and they told me that for their new season, they're leaning into a sort of 80s arcade-style aesthetic and I immediately started having some ideas. So in today's episode, I'm gonna draw the awesome skins that they've just released and design them into some wild, funky, 80s-style motion posters. I'm so excited for the amount of neon that's gonna be in this video. Now, first up, I had to start with the Hardened Veteran set. Of the three skins, this is probably my favorite. I really like how all three look, but I just think this one is so sick looking, and sometimes when I have a favorite in mind, I'll save it for second so that I warm up a little bit with one before going into my favorite, then really nailing it with the second one, but I just couldn't resist. I think the skin is super cool looking, and I really wanted to get to drawing it. I mean, the design is just his sort of padded armor kind of stuff. I love that he's got a really dark color palette and then some red streaks and the red eyes obviously stand out really nicely under the hood. And people who watch my videos regularly know I just really, really love a hood on any character design, especially a character that's meant for combat because it's kind of like they're saying, even with my peripherals totally cut off, I can still beat anyone in this fight. And that's just kind of like them showing off built into their design. So for this one, I wanted to lean a lot into the black parts of the character. Because he's got a really dark design overall, I added a lot more sections of black than I normally would, and I thought that would stand out nicely against a background that was probably gonna have a lot of lights to it. Because, you know, I'm gonna be working with a lot of neon and 80s glow kind of things. Now you can see I kinda roughed in a background and I had a decent idea for what I wanted to do with the background, but in terms of the animation, I didn't plan this one out as well as I should have. With the two coming up, I planned them out a lot better because of this one. I still like how this one turns out, it's just I hadn't thought it through quite as much on the animation side. But we'll get to that in animating. In the color palette here, you can see I'm leaning a lot more into the purple. Because this is going to be a really 80s up piece, I take all of the black parts of the character and kind of just purple them up a bit, and the lights on the character, I'm using a really saturated red on him. I really wanted to play around with the 80s colors. You can see I had a color palette in there before going into this, and I knew that I just really wanted to lean into those 80s colors because, you know, I want this to feel super 80s. This yellow to red sun that I'm working with in the background is an idea that I saw in a bunch of different 80s inspiration posters and stuff I was looking at. Obviously, the wireframe ground and environment is something you see a lot in 80s stuff. And then I give him a lot of rim lighting because I figure I'll have a lot of light coming from in behind the character. Again, from some neon stuff and obviously that sun. Now, as I said, my animation ideas weren't as fleshed out for this one. I knew I wanted some glow on the sun. I ended up adding some grain in behind the character over everything else that I think works really well. And then you can see I was messing around with this idea of having a neon streak go around the character. I don't actually end up using that, so I, my favorite part of this one ends up being what I do with the text, where I have it kind of pattern up from in behind the character and then pop out in front of us and do that wild 80s thing where a whole bunch of the text kind of moves in a 3D pattern in behind itself then comes back together. I think it works well for this piece, but I am going to plan out the animation better for the next one. But anyway, here's a look at our first motion poster. Next up, we're working with the Phantom Cat Girl set. 
And with this one, I had a better idea going into it. And see, the people over at PUBG Mobile said that they weren't just going for an 80s aesthetic, but for an 80s arcade kind of aesthetic. You can see up on the reference image I've got on the right side of the screen, in behind the character, there's a giant arcade machine. And I thought, let's lean into that. And lean into that being a bit of a pun in this case, because you can see I've got the character leaning on a giant joystick. So she's standing on an arcade machine, and then in behind her, I wanted to have some really bright, big, poppy neon. And this is probably the piece where I lean the most into the big, bright neon background, which it might have been smarter for me to do that with the last character, because his color palette is inherently the darkest, and this character's is arguably the brightest and most saturated. She's got the really nice, bright purple, I mean not quite bright, but much brighter than the other characters, purple jacket. It's got the cool gold lining both around the hood that helps draw focus to the face, as well as along the webby kind of texture on her chest. And then some bright pink in there on her heart eyes and her heart logo. And you can see that I didn't draw the eyes into this one, and that's because I knew I wanted to animate them. If you look at one of the cinematics for the game, you can see that she's got eyes that can kind of move and blink, like they're lights that can change from a heart shape to a line shape or whatever. So I knew I wanted to have the character in this cool pose, giving us the peace sign, and then kind of winking at us during the motion poster. So the eyes I end up building out separately in After Effects when we get to there. You can also see I'm leaning a little bit more cartoony with this one, and with all of the skins, I'm kind of stripping back a couple of the details from the original designs, just because that's kind of my style. I lean a little bit more into simplicity, so I keep some parts a little bit simpler while making sure it still looks very clearly like the original design. Then you can see right now I'm doing the lighting and shading. I do put a bunch of lighting from in front of her as if there's a bit of a yellowy light in front of her, but then I also add a bunch of bright pink rim lighting in behind her because I knew I wanted a lot of the neon behind her to be pink as well. And now that we've got the character into After Effects, you can see that it's starting to come together a bit more, especially with that neon coming in behind the character. And now I'm building out the hearts for the eyes, and I have to build out a line. I'm using the mosaic effect to make them look a little bit more pixelated, because that's how her eyes look in the cinematic. And then in the background, I'm adding in some pink neon streaky kind of things inspired by some reference images I was looking at. One of them is gonna stay in the whole time, then two of them are gonna kind of move around a bit. You can also see I was messing around with the tail. I drew that separately from the rest of the piece so that I could animate it using the puppet tool. I had a hard time figuring out exactly how I wanted it to move, but I ended up making it kind of more subtle than it seems here. I also thought I wanted to have the text in behind her kind of popping in and out, but after messing around with it a few times, I figured it was better to just have it in there for most of the piece instead of just coming in near the end. So I have it flicker a bit before finally showing up as it appears in the final motion poster. Finally, we've got our Wasteland Soldier, and this, I think, no competition turns into the best motion poster that I've ever made. The idea was clear, I feel like I executed it well, and it's a bit simpler than the other ones, but I think the simplicity makes it that much better. And I knew I wanted to have the character standing in and in front of this big neon triangle with a cool grid pattern kind of moving behind the triangle. And then you can see them really faded out in the corners of this piece. I've got these three little rectangles that I blocked in, and what those are is just a reminder of where this play button and some other VHS stuff is gonna go. I found this royalty-free VHS pattern on a site called anfx.co that I knew I wanted to put in there to add some nice VHS grain over the whole thing, really give it that 80s textured video kind of feel. And the other thing I wanted to lean into with this one was the gas, because the character's got a gas mask, he's got gas grenade, or I guess smoke grenades on his lapel thing, so I decided to have him holding two smoke grenades. I knew I was gonna have some smoke shooting out of them in the animation stage, and the way I do that is with a pack of stock footage that I bought a long, long time ago, back in my more heavy VFX days. It's a pack of stock footage for action stuff called Action Essentials from VideoCopilot.net. And so I knew I was going to use a bunch of the smoky, debris, dust kind of textures. And, well, we'll get more into that in the animation stage. 
You can see for the drawing that I am once again simplifying the design a little bit to work it better into my style. And honestly, I thought this was not my favorite of the three designs, but as I was drawing it and working with it, I was like, I actually really like how this one looks, especially how it ends up looking in my style. I especially love the X's in the eyes that I end up giving a little bit of a glowy look to. They stand out really nicely, and I love the red streaks against the whitey, gray kind of color of the rest of the gas mask. And then, of course, the super punky looking spikes on the head and shoulders. And I think the lighting ends up looking a lot nicer in this one. I just, I, I'm starting to notice more lately that I really like a yellow light on a dark purple character, which makes sense because they're complementary colors, but I should keep that in mind later on, that just that lighting combo, I think, looks really, really nice. But I got the character pretty much finished, and then I built out a rough grid pattern that I knew I could take into After Effects and start animating, and then we got to animating. I blocked out some color blocks to hide the grid in behind the triangle, made the triangle kind of neon-y, and then I even ended up bringing in that orange kind of sun from the first piece. It's a little bit more faded out, and then you can see here I've added in the VHS texture, but then I'm building a little bit of extra VHS texture myself. And I use something called the displacement map to make everything behind that texture kind of wiggle in a very VHS kind of way. And then you can see with the text here, I'm having the text kind of subtract from a big plume of dust and debris and smoke that comes up at the screen so that the text is only on screen for a little bit because I feel like the text was dominating the other ones a bit more. So having it just subtly come up, I think works really nicely for this piece. And so the final motion poster is here. Man, I knew that I loved the 80s design aesthetic and the look of these skins, but working with the two together, that, that was super fun. And once again, if you want to get playing with any of these skins, click the download link in the description to get PUBG Mobile. Congrats to them again on the second anniversary of their game. And why wouldn't you want to play this? I mean, look at this. This is a mobile game? Are you kidding me? You know what mobile games were like when I was a kid? Nothing. They didn't exist. Phones just had those big, rubbery, gushy buttons that once you'd pressed it too many times, you'd have to dig your thumb in for it to even register. Oh, this is nuts. And look at those skins. They're awesome looking. Oh, yeah, just go download it. And make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when videos on this channel are coming out. Hit the like button if you haven't already, if you enjoyed this. And give me other video ideas in the comments below, whether they be for drawings or motion posters or whatever. But that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popcraft Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube, and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye, everybody.